with me in studio, Brandy Cook. Woo! <laughs> Oh, well. Wow. Uh, check it out. Hey. <laughs> so, yeah, this thing's going I need to carry that around with me and <laughs> yeah. just play it in the car. <laughs> so, Brandy Cook, thank you for coming in today. Thank you for having me. Um, for anybody that's listening or watching that doesn't know who you are, you want to give uh, your name, your uh, elevator pitch, what you do, and uh, who you do it to? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Brandy Cook. I own a local brokerage, Brandy Cook Real Estate Group. I have several agents. I work. I personally work locally, just in Shirt Cibolo, Universal City, Selma area. It's my specialty. So you say you personally. So like you have, you have agents to go further yes, out. I have six other agents, and they they go everywhere. Mm -hmm. But I tend to just stay right here. Nice. How do you go about finding agents? I don't. Really? Yeah, I don't go out and farm. I don't do anything like that. Everybody I have, they've came to me. Nice. And I've had a few come to me and they're just not a good fit for what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, we're more, we're not very salesy. Mm -hmm. We're more very organic in how we get clients. We don't pay for leads. We just get who comes to us mainly by reference. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So <laughs> you, there was you a stay day, pretty busy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, there was a day where, where I wanted to build a big empire sure. and it's just not like that. It's not like that anymore. I, I think at some point, anybody that goes out on their own, I think they have that vision at some point. Yeah, and then you get reality hits. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, You're uh, like, no, I want people around me that are like me, yes. who have the same goals, same disposition, and work in the same manner I do. You know, whenever I went out on my own, I was f so scared to turn down any work. Oh, no, I, and I still have a problem saying no. Sure, but... Probably not as much of a problem as oh, you used I'll to. I'll happily say no if it comes between <laughs> I'm going to spend time with my family or I know my limit. What I did was I learned my limits. Really? In that time. Okay. Yeah. How long have you been doing this? Did, oh. I think you asked, did I ask you that? I don't know, but I, honestly, I don't know. Maybe seven, eight, nine years. I'm not sure. What'd you do before that? I was a stay at home mom for 19 years. We had a resource business. I, I did horses and kids. Okay. What made you decide to get into real estate? So I knew someone who had a real estate license and I went in and my husband had worked his ass off for ever. Oh, am I allowed to cuss? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. You say whatever you want to <laughs> it say. It just flows out. <laughs> um, so, easy to say. so I felt like, okay, so the kids were growing, you know, they were starting to leave for college and I needed something. Mm -hmm. I needed something that would maybe take, take it off of him a little bit because he was getting towards retirement and I just wanted to give him some sort of relief. Sure. So I was like, okay, I'll go be a realtor because I could do the school from home, online. Mm -hmm. I could still keep my life intact. And that's what I did. And I didn't know I'd love it like I did. Yeah? Yeah. Otherwise, I wouldn't do it. I wasn't going to do anything I didn't love. <laughs> I would have just done it and quit. Ask Mike. <laughs> He'll tell you. <laughs> so, because I thought about going to nursing school. I thought about a lot of things, but this was something that fit into my life to get the education to do it. Nice. Okay. Once I got it, I wasn't going to go in half ass. Right. I wasn't going to be, because you hear about people coming in and there's nothing wrong with it being a stay at home mom and still being a real estate agent. Right. I'm not built like that. I either need to do it. Right. Or not. Or not. Yeah. So I went in. Well, and I think that's fair to say with, you know, and, and, and there's a lot of people that do a real estate part time. Yeah. You know, and, and that's and fine. Yeah. I, it's just can, not how I can do it. If you can do that, there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. You know, yeah. that's, that's up to you. So like one of the big things that, you know, I've been talking with people about, or, you know, is like side hustles. You know what I mean? So I feel like, I feel like everybody can agree the term or the phrase putting all your eggs in one basket is not a good thing, right? But whenever you're um, employed, whenever you're working for somebody, you're basically putting all of your income eggs in one basket. In somebody else's basket too. Yeah, even worse. Yeah. So, you know, um, like I told my kids and, you know, and anybody that'll listen really, it's like, you know, I've always had a couple of things going on. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not going to say that's right or wrong. I'm just saying that was just me. Yeah. So, but you can't, if something happens, you know, to be able to start something, get it going, and then pay the bills with it, that's challenging to get done oh. in short order. My point was just like, so the support system, right? Whenever you start, whenever you start your entrepreneurial endeavor, there's always some sort of support, whether it's, yes. whether it's from a spouse or whether it's you or whether it's your your friends giving you an attaboy or an attagirl, whatever it is, it there's some sort of support. It has to be something. It has to be. There has to be. You know yeah. what I mean? So it sounds like at, at you know, 
after you came close to becoming an empty nester, it Mm -hmm. sounds like, you know, um, uh, so you had you had your family for support. Oh yeah, I had my husband. I mean, because he still worked full time. But my goal, secretly in my head, was like if I could get to a point where he could retire. Mm-hmm. Because what he had done, he had afforded me the life to stay home and raise the kids. Yeah. And he just, I mean, he had worked himself to the bone. Yeah. And he was tired all the time. He still did it. Yeah, yeah. And I would. That's what I wanted. I wanted him to be able to just step away for a little bit. So your why. You know? Yeah, that was my why. That's for nice. sure. You know, um, <clears throat> when you just de- when you decided that you're like, okay, real estate, this is the thing. This is what I'm going to do. This is it. What, I'm doing it. What did what, what did you have in your mind? What was going to happen? Did you think that you were going to have your own brokerage? And did you no. think you were going to have your own realtors? What was your no idea going into this? You were, you know, what did you think was going to happen versus what was, actually happened? It was very single-minded. Go sell houses. Mm-hmm. Go sell fucking houses. Mm-hmm. And that that was my mindset. And that's what I did. And what I found that I personally was good at was not the selling of the houses so much, but relating to people, making contacts. That's my business. Yeah. And the people that I have contacts with, that's who buys from me. And I feel like they're family. And I know that sounds sticky and uh, you know what I mean? But that's... That's the path I took. But my context, that's what makes me good, though, and I know that, is when I have a client, all they have to do is call me and say, I need this. I got someone. Right. I got someone for everything. I mean, you know that yeah, about me. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And that's what I've put together that has, on the backside, made me very good at what I do. It's the support team around that I've built. I've built this huge wall of people. Yeah, yeah, well, um so, okay, so you went from go sell fucking houses yep. to <laughs> maybe maybe I get somebody to help me. How, how did you get into having, so, uh, you know, when did it become, hey, go sell houses to, you know what, I think I might want to build an empire or start. Okay, so there, I don't have a team. So everybody that works at the brokerage, they're all independent. Okay. So they all go do it. But what I knew is if I was able to do it, sorry. No, you're fine. If I was able to do it like that, spend minimal money, Mm -hmm. because I am a cheapskate. I won't pay for marketing if I don't have to. I won't do any of that. And still go make a a nice living. Mm -hmm. Then I can teach other people how to do it. Right. And that's what I did. So I'd have someone approach me and I'd be like, come on, because, you know, I can't say no. (laughs) I'm like, come on, I'll do it. Let's do it together. Because I'm always about, you know, if someone wants to come join me, we're going to be a team. Let's go. Lock arms, let's yes, do it together. Yes, let's do it. Because nice. I don't mind sharing. Um, what I found in this industry, a lot is, there's a lot of not sharing or holding your stuff close. Yeah. The thing is, is in with real estate, oh my gosh, with realtors, if I have six agents, no one person has ever approached two of us. So I'm going to attract certain people. Yeah. And they're going to attract different people. I can teach them the exact same thing I know, and it does not threaten me in any way. Well, it's, you're you're very right. Whenever you're saying about you know, there's a personality for everybody. Yes, there's an ass for every chair. And so, like, you don't necessarily you know, and maybe you don't want to deal with this type of person, but they oh, do. You are there's some type A's that don't want to deal with me. I'm too flighty. I figured that out from trial and error. Yeah. You know, they don't. They love me at first, but. They don't love me once they dig in with me. Well, so, and, you know, that's fair. I mean, you know, it's not like, you know, there has to be a one, you know, one, one day, deal or whatever. Yeah. The The question was going to be, do you feel like you have any competition? So it sounds like no. Because, I'm my own competition. Right. I, I, through the years I have, you know, you, it's such a small community. You have people that you hear, oh, well, they don't like you. They've never met me. Mm-hmm. I'm their competition, but I'm really not. If they would sit down and think about it, I'm not their competition either. You're, I think you're exactly right when you say you're your own competition, but you do need to have a gauge of how the successful you're being. You know yes. what I mean? So like if you're selling one house a year and everybody around you is selling, you know, 10 houses a month. Okay, there's, yeah, you need so, to rethink So you kind of, kind of, you know, yeah, you're going to have to, you know, they're not your competition, but they're obviously doing something that you need to figure out. Yeah. Competition is such a funny thing. To it's different ugly. people. You know what I mean? I feel it's like, like it's ugly. Well, it definitely can be. You know what yeah. I mean? So, like, I know, like, with Acme, you know what I mean? Whenever we were doing the signs and stuff like that, it's like, you know, there were certain people that it's like, you know, they get a chip on their shoulder and like, oh, he's doing that now. Oh, man. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know the same people that you know. 
yeah, different, you're, different people are going to be attracted to those people. Yeah. You know? And yeah. I mean, like I had a, a completely different mindset than most people. So it's like, I want to do something that is way outside of what you're doing. You can technically say we're doing the same thing and that technically we're competitors, but we're not. Yeah. To the people that you, that would say that you are their competitor. Right. Um, how do you, how do you navigate that? Yeah. How do you, how do you I mean, like, because it, I mean, I, I realize that you're not going to go, you know, that y'all are out, maybe, maybe, maybe not, but I was say maybe y'all aren't slashing each other's tires, but I mean, like no. y'all go to events together and I say y'all, I just mean like realtors. Yeah. You see lots of realtors in the same spot because of whatever event is happening. Right. Whatever. A title company event, sure, a sure. lender event. Yes, of course. But it's not like, you know blood in the water and you know no because there's not a client there to take <laughs> <laughs> we it'd be a little bit different if there was a client sitting in, in the, the middle, middle. <laughs> <laughs> like a like a lamb <laughs> i know <laughs> i know <laughs> that's hilarious so um so how do you handle that socially yeah i mean is it i mean and i'm socially awkward anyway so i don't you know maybe i'm, I'm a runner so if there's somebody I know that hates me, I will avoid them like the plague. <laughs> so if they're at that event, I just turn around and walk out. Because, I mean, I don't even want to put myself around it. If it yeah. doesn't matter to me, I'm not going to do it. Negative energy. But I used to. I used to go and just feel uncomfortable when I was trying to build my empire. Sure. And I've learned that you don't have to. Yeah, you, you can do it and not even speak to other realtors. I mean. Yeah, you don't have to like mm -mm. stay. I don't your, go to events you know, that much. I don't do I don't get out much anymore. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. It doesn't lose me business. That's what I know. That's what I've learned. When you were uh, fresh off the, yeah. fresh off the press, you yeah. know, um, eager, eager, what, um, uh, how did you get, how did you get the ball rolling? How did you start? How did you start sourcing sales? How did you start sourcing? Okay. Clients? So beforehand, before I got my license, I'm a very social person. I can talk to anybody. <laughs> And I was on um, the booster club at Clemens. I was okay. on the dance booster club. Um, I knew my kids' parents. And, you know, I chatted with them all the time because that's who I am. I'm, I'm going to chat with you if I see you. <laughs> and I may not remember your name, but I'm going to chat with you. <laughs> and um, I had all kinds of contacts. I had horse contacts. I had hay contacts. A lot of local. Because I had, we had been here with our horse business forever on a farm on 1518. Okay. So I had tons of contacts. So what I did was I just sat down and started sourcing. I just started Facebook. Facebook has been the, uh, Facebook has been one of the main reasons I'm successful. Really? Yes. Yes. I don't pay for advertising. Facebook and my husband, his knowledge in the sales industry mm -hmm. and Facebook. That is what has put me on the map. I was really blown away by how uh, utilized Facebook is mm -hmm. for some for, sure. for some realtors, you know, since I can say that you're a seasoned uh, uh, realtor. That sounds so weird. Like, I can't, <laughs> I can't believe I'm a seasoned realtor. I feel like I just started. What would you say is probably is the, the biggest misconception from the, from people that are not realtors? What would you say is if you had, if you had oh. to choose one, what would you say is the biggest misconception? That realtors put their commission first. Okay. And I don't think about my commission. I mean, it's how I make a living. Let's all be honest. Y yeah. I mean, but you gotta... I don't think of, I never, when I'm going through the process with a client, I'm thinking about them. First of all, I only work in this area and I have to face them at HEB when they're done. Right. So, and second of all, if, if you put, if you do your job well, your money will come. Right. And yes, that's what, that's what I put forward. And that is kind of my mantra. And it's so strange to hear stories of other agents where that's how their clients walked away, feeling like they only wanted the commission. But again, there's client, there's people out there that, well, that's the first thing they say to people. Mm -hmm. Oh, you just want your commission. You don't know how my commission is broke down and how I don't get all of it. And right. Mean, that's not what I'm chasing because I'm just trying to do my job. Right. Listen, I have to eat. You know, yeah. uh, there, there's, yeah. uh, there's, <laughs> uh, you're right. It, uh, you know, it's, but that's not what I'm thinking about through the process. I'm going to eat. Right. I'm going to eat. <clears throat> I have clients. That's so, not what I'm thinking about. So, yeah. So does that. Cause I give my commission away sometimes. Like I, you know, I'll help them with a home warranty or, you know, I don't mind doing that. But when it's asked of me, 
It's way different. It's like me coming up to you and saying, hey, dude, can you give me some of your paycheck? Yeah. And it's almost offensive because we're we were raised, you don't talk about money. And mm-hmm. then when somebody asks, they wouldn't ask the guy, the cashier at H-E-B. Exactly right. While they were getting groceries. Hey, can I have part of your paycheck? And it's You didn't put all the groceries in that bag. I did. Can I have yes, the part of your exactly. check that you were supposed to do? Exactly. Yeah. So those two kind of tie in together that, you know, we only think about commission and just the offensiveness of how it's expected for us to give some of that away. They just see a big number, mm-hmm. and that number is not that big. Well, that goes to the brokerage. Well, that doesn't go to us. Well, not only that though, it's there's so many it, it, there's so many things that are taken out of that big big number. Yeah, you, you, I think you know honestly, I mean? with realtors, our time is not. Once we get everything back, the time we put in in that thirty to sixty day process, it's not in what we get. Yeah, it's not. So. Um, we were talking a little while ago, like how you're taking the 2 a.m. phone calls. Oh, and yeah, stuff like that. So for sure. It's like you're on call 24 hours a day. Oh, yes. Do you get Absolutely. 24 hours a day on call pay? You know yeah. what I mean? No. <laughs> There's no time and a half yeah. in being you, your own boss. You know, so, <clears throat> yeah, that's, I would definitely say that's fair to, you know, yeah. that's a fair thing. Or to, anniversary dinners or birthday dinners, you know, where I step away from the table or I have to take a call. I have the most amazing family because they're like, okay, yeah, she's on a call. And they're okay with it. But mm-hmm. I can't imagine if it wasn't okay with someone in the household. Sure. Uh, any advice there for a new realtor? If, if, if you have to um, if you have to schedule family time, forget it. Huh? No, no family time. <laughs> no family time. I get my family time, but my family time is also I'm going to answer the phone. Yeah. Because that that is, first of all, it's that client panicking or needing something. Because mm-hmm. they're not calling me to shoot the shit. They're calling me because they need something. You know, we draw blueprints for self-storage. And so while that job is typically how it has been traditionally done is that that job has been in-house, you know, with whatever contractor is doing it, Mm -hmm. they have a staff that do that, right? So since they can sub that out to me, we can do it, you know, that's all we do. Yeah. But the problem is, is like you might build five jobs a year. I need five jobs a month. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So in real estate, you know what I mean? You might be buying one or two homes throughout your entire life, but... I need three or four houses to make a nice living a month. Right. Um, I was talking with Ken uh, the other day, and he was saying the the hardest part about his job in real estate right now is getting people to believe the market is actually what it is. Yeah. He said that they... They either think one or the other, it's going to get better or it's going to crash. Well, and also though, like he, what he said he's running into, he's just like, he goes, you know, somebody wants to go look at a $200,000 house. And he said, he's like, you don't know what a $200,000 house is anymore. He goes, no, a $200,000 take... house is a 110 house last year. Right. And yes. that's basically what he said. You know, yeah. he said, you know, he was like, <clears throat> if what you are describing to me is a $350,000 house. Yes. You know, he goes, <laughs> so, yes. you know, you got to, if you figure out which way, you, you know, he goes, that's been like just, he said most of his clients, they go through, they go through about six houses before losing six houses yeah. before they realize, okay, we need to, we need to either just give up on getting this house, getting a house, or we need to step up our game. Yeah. You know, and it's crazy. It's yeah, crazy it is. time right now. It is. Know? The market's flipped where we used to take our buyers out and that was the bread and butter. Mm-hmm. And I would do, you know, 80% buyers and just 20% sellers. I fl- That is all flipped around for me. Wow. Because buyers are so much harder. I mean, I'll go do it. Yeah. But there's ways inside the contract to, to tweak things. Mm-hmm. And when you lay it out for the agent, when you make your offer, I mean, an experienced agent will do that. Okay. So there's ways to make offers where it doesn't, it's not horrible and it's not too much for the buyer and they can get it. Another thing that I've noticed is they're afraid of VA loans. VA loans? Yes. Who's they? Um, the sellers, the sellers accepting offers from VA loans. And we're almost all VA here. Really? So with all the military. So what's happened is, is the realtors need to educate their sellers that VA is okay. Yeah. (laughs) It's okay. It's not too much different than FHA. They just need to educate their sellers better. So we're running into where the market's crazy. We need more educated realtors Mm -hmm. to guide their clients. Interesting. Can you think of any time when you're, you've had a deal fall apart because of another, the agent on the other end of the transaction? Like has an agent, uh, another. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Because of uh, a lack, lack of education for. Yes. Really? Absolutely. So 
the and probably in the beginning i had some fall apart because i was uneducated i mean let's <laughs> fair, be fair honest enough, fair enough yeah you know you can't expect on everything yeah. where did you get your license through um saint edwards i think it was saint edwards saint edwards is it a college it's a yeah uh, yeah but it's an on it's an online <laughs> program yeah okay so like the champion the school that, yeah that's a good one what, what's the name of it it's champion a, school of real estate so that place is local here in san antonio yes and i believe they have they have more than one location I don't, I don't even know. I, I think that they do. But anyways, um, th- there's a lot of, they turn out a lot of realtors. Yes. Yes. Real estate school, we learn what we need to learn to pass the test. Okay. I'm kind of talking about education from experience. Okay. So you make a mistake, you learn from it, you don't ever fucking do it again. You know, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, we all take CE classes to mm-hmm. keep where we are and keep our lessons as current but this is like having street knowledge, you know, yeah. it's like getting out there. You've had so many, you have to do those transactions. If you don't do a lot of transactions, you're not learning. So there's agents, if they just sell a few a year, mm-hmm. they don't know to go in and tweak that, you know, that contract in certain ways and yeah. knowing. And because the last time they sold one, it was okay for the buyer mm-hmm. to pay the, not to not pay the seller's policy. Mm. We're now almost all offers are, you know, the buyer is paying the seller's policy. Right. So it's just, it's, being current and keep going. And yeah. if you're out there, you will have the knowledge. Okay. That's fair. What is the um, uh, most satisfying part of your job? Oh my gosh. I already know this totally offhand. So when I see on Facebook a year later, little kids riding their bike in front of that house in pictures. Nice. That's it. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, and too, right. So um, I was talking with Kim about this, the whole Facebook memories thing. It's oh kind, yeah, it's kind of bittersweet because sometimes yeah. you know you get some loss in your life or whatever. But like, I guess you know, like for you, if you taking pictures, you know, Facebook could oh, remind yeah. you, hey, remember this time Don't last forget. year? Don't forget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if you see something and it was it was really hard or something, you thought, oh my god, I can't believe I lived through that. <laughs> <laughs> that was the one I didn't sleep for three weeks, or you know, that was her first house and she did like today I closed on a house. It's her first house. She's single. She has three kids and it's the first wow. house she ever bought. Wow. And she's Latina. Wow. So it was just, it was like, we were cheering. I woke up excited. <laughs> it was a whole thing today. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you know, you get to help a lot of people, you know, yeah. you can, it's possible. You know yeah. I mean? So worst client you ever had. I don't even know if I should say it publicly. <laughs> Okay, well, so just think about the... Because th- even if I say the situation, that client would know who she is. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. So what is... um? It, I did... Okay, I can I can tell you one. This is the second to worst. Okay. I had some clients that were selling a house, and they put false accusations online about me on Yelp because... And they lied. They just lied. And so I kept, this was. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You were, you were their listing agent? I was the list agent on this property. And then the they pe- wanted to purchase another house too. And they would double deal. Like they'd call the builder and tell him one thing and say that I said something and it wasn't true. Mm-hmm. So the builder would call me and I'd try to, and my, my, I'd call him and say, okay, what's going on? Cause I would want to yeah. clarify and let's fix it. Right. Cause that's my job. I'm the fixer. Mm-hmm. And they would deny saying it. Or so they called me as a couple and screamed at me and, and I do get cussed out a lot just so everyone's aware. Really? So, well, yeah, because they're, everybody's so stressed, shit rolls downhill and it lands on me. And I'm okay with that because I understand the stress. Sure. I've been there, but they called me as a couple and screamed at me for 15 minutes and I t- they wanted their earnest money back for the house and they wanted me to take their listing off the market. And I think I just, I don't even remember exactly what it was. I think I just asked them to like sign something or, oh, I had paid for pictures. And I was like, would y'all mind? Cause I mean, I paid like $800 yeah. or no, it was like $500. Cause I did the drone. I sure, did everything. Yeah. And um, I said, Could, do y'all mind just paying me back for the pictures? Like, Cause I'll like, if you don't want to be with me, let's part ways. Yeah. I'm not gonna I don't want to be hold forcing. You chicken Thank and you. Screaming, Thank you, know? you. So I was okay with all of it. And then they said I was trying to embezzle from them. So, I mean, it was just, and it was, and let's boil it down. They were stressed. It was a money issue. They were stressed, but that's not the worst one. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's In still not that bad. Huh? No. Uh-uh. <clears throat> so, um, through the course of your career, 
Has there has there ever been um, a series of losses where you're just like, this business sucks. I don't want to do this anymore. Oh. So the worst one I ever had is linked to that, and it made me think, do I want to do this? So, And I was in the middle of the height of me just, that empire was, I had bricks <laughs> happening. Mm-hmm. And I just kind of, it, it, it broke a little bit. What kept you going? What, what made you? I stopped and did it my way. Okay. I backed up and that, that's what started me to doing it my way. The empire. I, mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I have my little empire, but sure. it's just little. It doesn't matter. It's, yeah, it's, it's mine. One thing that you wish you had known before you started this business. Oh, I don't know. I kind of liked that I went in not knowing. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Like going in and just. I like being sucker because I'm not a planner (laughs) (laughs) because that way, because, okay, that it was so petty, you know, that Mm -hmm. competitors or people that thought that I was, when I was rising, I had people, it hurt. I took it personally when people didn't like me. Yeah. I don't give two shits if you like me now. (laughs) I don't care. You know, so that sort of thing, I took things way too personal and Oh my goodness. That was stupid. Yeah. But yeah. you can't help it because they're talking about you. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. It's instinctive. Right? It is. It's you like, know? why do you not like me? Well, and then too, right. So whenever somebody's giving you a hard time, it's like, when do I get, who's going to come to my defense? Nobody. You got to come to your own you defense. Do. You know what I mean? You do. So then it's like, oh, I, and I, I've actually had some issues like that, similar to that with my drafting business, where it's like, you're not there to defend yourself. You know what I mean? And yeah. then so somebody can throw you into the bus. It's part of a conversation that's happening. And, and you then, were never there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so in the next thing you know, you know, I'm not getting any work from this customer anymore. And what what did I do? Yeah. What happened? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then it's like. Okay. You know what I came to the conclusion of? If they're stupid enough to believe it, you don't want to be around them. That's such a hard thing to believe. Okay. It I, takes I, I, it I believe took about you. a year. Uh, no, no, no. Hold on. Let me, let me rephrase all that. That's such a hard thing to own. It, it is. You know what I mean? It is. You're absolutely right. It but is. in order, like for for me to own that philosophy is so hard. It took me a year of like repeating it. It's not my issue. It's theirs. If they want to talk about me, I'm not part of that conversation. Sure. And it honestly, if somebody was talking about me now, I don't even care. What would you say is the biggest mistake you made in real estate? Not serving my clients, being too busy. Being too busy. And not serving them like they needed to be served. Yes, okay. that was part of me backing off, and it wasn't fair to them. Okay. And that is my biggest mistake. And getting tied up with the people that I probably shouldn't have. I should have just moved on other, you know, where I was before. I should have done this a long, a long before I did. Sure. Well, I mean, you know, that that education, though, is like you, you got you, you got to learn. Because if you don't learn, I wouldn't know. And I honestly appreciate where I was mm-hmm. and what I've learned from them. And learned what not to do. Yeah. So I would, and I, I used to be like mad and I don't, right. I wish them all well. Yeah. Go do you. Yeah. Well, it, it's, it's a lot easier on like for me on, personally, yeah. it's like, you know, you don't have to carry that hate or that anger or that whatever yeah. the hell. It's like, just leave it alone. You, I hope you do well. Yeah. And I honestly do. Yeah. I know. I feel you like know? that too. I, I feel like I wish people would understand. I hope they do well. Yeah. I, I'm good. Cause it's not taking from me. And also, also little, little bonus here is if they're doing well, they're going to leave you alone. I know. <laughs> I, know. I know. Just please, please do well. Please nah, do well. I, I stay so far out of the fray now that I don't even, I don't care. Nice. That's good. That's a good place to be. Yeah. <clears throat> so that was uh, your, your biggest mistake. What would you say is your biggest win? It's every time I close a client yeah. and it's not the money. Yeah. You know, it, it's when I close them and they have a home. Yeah. They have a home to live in. That's a big thing, especially yeah. now. This market, have you ever been involved in anything like that? Oh, it? hell no. Mm-mm. So, and I'm going to venture to say a lot of people haven't, right? Right. Le- learning as they go. Yeah. So what is your um, crystal ball say for the next five years? Is there for, an election in the next for, five years? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but for a brand for for your for business, me? for your business, not not necessarily the industry, but for your business. Oh, okay, okay. So my business, I feel like I might grow a little bit. Mm-hmm. I won't grow too much. I'm on cruise control, nice. so there's some things I'm going to be tweaking in the next few years. Nothing big, nothing upcoming. You know, we're just going to be doing our job. How did COVID affect your business? It didn't. No. No. 
I've been a little bit busier since COVID, but right before COVID, I had kind of backed off anyway. So it was part of it. Kind of it, it actually was pleasant. I, I, sorry yeah. about COVID, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, it was awesome for me. Well, I, I mean, worked, I made money, I made a living, mm-hmm. and I still I got to see my family constantly. So that's the other thing, right? Is is, is you know, for me, um, you know, I, I'm. My youngest son's 21 now. So, yeah. Um, but whenever they were younger, the, the hardest thing for me having a business and being home is, is getting is, it done. Well, well, no, just the opposite is, is, is putting it away. Oh, I never put it away for the evening or yeah, for the whatever. Do that. You know what I mean? So I sit in my chair, my computer's always next to me and my phone's always on top of that. So I get a phone call, no matter what I'm doing, I, you know, I can be yeah. reading a bedtime story to my grandson and I'm going to pick it up and say, hold on a sec. <laughs> yeah. Just a minute. You already but know But they all happens. know. Everybody knows. Everybody <laughs> yeah. in my family knows and they're okay with it. Yeah. Well, I mean, that goes back to your support. You know, that's. Yeah. I can't imagine somebody doing it without that. What? Listen, if you, this is your passion, this is what you want to do. You've got to find whatever support it is. Yeah. To oh, allow you to so do that. I was so fortunate. You know? My husband comes from a sales background though. So he, he got it. Mm-hmm. He got, he knows what I like. Uh, and I'm not a salesman by no stretch and I don't like sales at all. But what I really like about sales is, is like, you're kind of in control of your own. You earn salary. what you do. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, um, you know, like with, uh, you know, a couple of my other, uh, guests, you know, it's, if you need more money for whatever reason you need it, you are in control of making that it mm-hmm. dynamic. Oh, I need to go hustle up some more yeah. business or, or whatever. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. it's um, it's nice to be able to have some flexibility in that control. There is more entrepreneurship going on now mm-hmm. than there was in our parents' generation. Yes, yes. They were always working for someone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so you know, because you can just create money. Yeah. You can just think of a business. We have the internet. You can go oh, online and be that business. The internet, man. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy to think of life before internet. My business right now, I've, I have customers that I've never met. Yeah, you know? because the internet. My biggest customers are, you know, East Coast, West Coast. Mm-hmm. You know, I've seen pictures of them on their website. But I mean, that's, <laughs> that's it. You know what I mean? So um, uh, it's, yeah, technology and, the, and just the way things have evolved over time has been pretty cool. But yeah, the internet is a huge equalizer. Yeah. Time for the lightning round. Okay, I'm so excited. So you got four decks in front of you. These are called pod decks, and they are specific for podcasts. Of course, I'm not using them correctly because that's just how I roll. Okay. Um, These are supposed to be like in um, like subject matter for the show, and I'm that's just not how I roll. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna pick a color, and then I'm gonna pick. uh, I'm going to shuffle that deck. I'm going to take five cards and I'm going to read them to you and you're going to answer them. Green? Green. So the green deck is what the heck. So I don't think we've done this one yet. Question is, has anyone ever started a rumor about you? Oh, you know that. If yes. so. Absolutely. If so, what was it about? That's, I don't know. That's how insignificant. I know. That's how. <laughs> it, I don't know. Well, no, I mean, this goes exactly back to what we were talking about earlier. You know, it doesn't matter. I don't even remember. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> But yes, yes, they have. <laughs> if humans came with a warning label, what would yours say? Oh, just move aside. Move aside. I'm a tornado. <laughs> just step aside and don't get frustrated. Mine would probably say uh, warning can be over analytical. <laughs> <laughs> Extra. I'm the opposite. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <clears throat> would you ever consider writing to somebody in jail as a pen pal. Yeah, no. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> they probably visit my house after or something <laughs> weird. I can't do it. Have you have you ever accidentally texted the wrong person? How did it turn out? All the time. I do it. I, I don't even know how it turned out. I do it on a daily. I can tell you how it normally turns out. <laughs> um, all right, last one. What is the strangest skeleton you ever discovered in somebody's closet? Okay. This could be personal or figurative or um, uh, real life. <laughs> Since you're a realtor. <laughs> okay, so I'll be real life because there, I've seen some strange things. So the one of the, cra- one of the craziest things I've ever seen is we walked in. I had buyers and we walked into a listing. 
And the man was hanging out in his, his living room. And there was, yeah, he was hanging out in his living room. There was a bowl full of marijuana. And he asked us if we want to sit down and have some with him. And my clients were elderly. <laughs> and we went in the bedroom and shut the door and laughed. Because he was just sitting there just Chill. smoking a bowl, bowl or whatever it's called. I don't even know. But that's my funniest. The other one was we walked into another house. The dude was laying in bed under the covers. And we walked in the room. He was like, yeah, y'all can come in and look at it. I don't care. Come on. And we were like, no thanks. It smelled like bleh, bedroom in there or something. <laughs> it just smelled like house. Besides Facebook, yeah. what is your most favorite or most productive tool for Selling real estate. The humans I sell to, that's who I invest in. I don't invest in outside marketing. I invest in the clients I've had before mm -hmm. for referrals. Okay. That's my most, that is more than Facebook now at this point. Really? Yeah, I'm probably 90, 99, 98% referral. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, after year three, I was probably 50% referral. I want to say that's not common. I don't know. I don't know. I don't pay it. I don't mind anybody else's business. There you go. That's I great. don't know. That's incredible. That's, um, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and people in the community that I've done things with, cause I'll do events and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So what kind of events? So I'll do my ladies night event every three months. I do a Botox event. I have local, local vendors that come in. They, it's all women owned mm -hmm. and they sell jewelry, makeup, whatever. And we do that quarterly. I'm doing, um, with one of my old clients, we're doing a St. Jude bingo fundraiser in September. Nice. You know, I just, I called bingo last week at the senior center. I mean, I just try to stay in. I don't have to go meet with realtors at those events anymore, like title events and stuff. Mm -hmm. like that. That's not what gets me business. So I'm just trying to stay in the community and I don't have to advertise it on Facebook too much. I mean, yeah. I'm just doing what I like to do. So the Facebook thing seems like it could be a double-edged sword, right? So it is a double-edged sword. You can't, you can't, like you just said, you can't. You don't talk politics. Up, you don't talk religion. Well, not only that, but I mean, like you can't put too much real estate out there. It seems like. Oh no, because then you'll block be blocking. you. Yeah. What would you? Uh, what What advice would you give your younger, your younger self, young, 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 teenage young? Oh, I should have. Yeah, to start this early. Really? Yes. Get to work. Yeah. Because I could have done that. I mean, my grandson's home with me most of the time. Mm -hmm. I could have done this and raised children. And I could I could probably be retired. But now I honestly feel like I'll do this until I'm 80 or can't get upstairs or, yeah, you know. In incapacitated or Yeah, because I love it. Yeah. But start younger. Any pitfalls? Oh, yeah. Well, every, every day. To um, more specifically, any pitfalls to the business side of having – your own business. You know what I mean? So like I'm responsible to keep the doors open. You know, there's other people depending on me and they depend on me. Like I'm just out there flying around and zipping around in my own world and they're depending on me. That's, that's scary. So you're acknowledging that that's great. Yeah. Well, because like for me, like, you know, I have employees whenever I first started hiring employees, yeah. that was, am I doing enough? Are, are they okay? I didn't want to um, flake out on anybody. I didn't want to. Oh, and I, I am, I'm, and I'm just a genetic flake. Oh, no. no, I am. You call me an organ. I said, I almost canceled today. I cancel <laughs> everything. What, well, what I mean, <laughs> what I mean is like, you know, whenever it took me a really long time to hire the first employee. And the, it's first daunting. Employee, the first employee that I hired was a, a friend of mine. So it kind of was like, let's try this out. Right. Let's be together. Let's I, I did the exact works, same thing, you know? So, and you know, she, she, she did, you know, she proved the theory, you know, that it works, but you know, I didn't want to be that boss. That's like, um, a dick. we don't, I don't care about being a dick. No. I didn't want to up. Uh, I didn't want to append anybody's life. You know, like if they're going to put their faith in me to come to work for me, I don't want, you know, Hey, this week, Oh, sorry. I don't have no payroll. You know what I mean? Yes. Uh, you know what I mean? So like, I, you know, feast or famine is, is a real thing with being on your own. And so like, if, when you bring someone on and yeah, cause you know, in my case, I have to teach them how to, I have to teach them to fish. Mm -hmm. Can't give them fish. So it's scary. What if they don't go fish? What if, what if they're not doing good? And you know, of course, if it's not happening, human nature, they're going to blame, blame it on you. me. Yeah. yeah. The people that, that come to you, are they, are they seasoned? Uh, Some, are brand new. Some are brand new. Yeah. Um, 
So the brand new ones, how long does it take for them to, to get to where they are? I don't want to say comfortable. No, it depends on the human. I have one. She's actually a police officer in Garden Ridge. She's Mm -hmm. amazing. She hit the ground running. She had contacts. Nice. And she's on a course. She's amazing. And, you know, like my son, when he graduated, he got his lessons a year later, but he didn't have that circle of contacts. It's literally taken him three years to build up some contacts who don't look at him like a kid. Like he's capable. And I feel like he's just starting to just coming into his own. Nice. How, so how does he, how does, how does he build his circle of renters? He goes, he goes and finds renters. They turn into buyers a year later. He's filled a pipeline by doing that. Long play. Yeah. Um, now the kids that were hit, you know, graduated with him, he's 25. They're starting to buy houses. Nice. So he's just now, but it was so hard. It's funny because he'd get like 40 year old <laughs> women before that. <laughs> so, but that's who his clientele was. And now he's more on a 25 to 30 year old level. Nice. And he's able to get clients, but he didn't have that booster club or mm-hmm. just, he's not chatty. Right. Yeah. But it's funny because people meet him and meet me and they like him more, <laughs> but, and it's probably because I talk too much. What do you, what do you do to reset, rest, clear the brain? I- okay. So I, again, I, I don't. So I leave town. You know, I get to point, I get to a point and then I have to leave town for a little bit. And what, what does that look like? Leave town, like, leave town. And we'll just go down to, there's a condo that like, we go to in North Padre or, okay. you know, we'll go on a vacation. We'll go to Vegas. We'll do something. Mm-hmm. And it's funny. Cause when we go down to North Padre, we'll go for three days and I'll keep saying, okay, I'm staying another day. I'm sta-. So we'll end up staying seven or eight days. So we were scheduling it for May because I'm getting there. Yeah. I'm kind of tired, but I know I hadn't worked hard enough to be that tired. It's kind of, it's so weird. But my husband's scheduling it now. I was like, he said, we can do a whole week if you want. And I was like, awesome. Because I just expect a couple of days. But I have to, even if I'm working, if I'm away, I get that sense of you can decompress. Yeah. You can be away. You're not in your house because I work in my house a lot. I don't have the same, I don't have to run. I can't run out and go to a showing. Right. Our families are the first people that we neglect as entrepreneurs. It's easy to say you got to turn it off. You know what I mean? Oh, no. Yeah. It's like, you know. Just be honest. You can't do it. No, hell no. No. (laughs) I am the worst time manager, I think, on the planet. Oh, no, me too. It's okay. (laughs) You know, so, I mean, and I don't want to be that. I hate being late to shit. I hate standing people up. I hate all of that. You know, and it's never intentional. If that, if, no, if you're listening and you're like, yeah, but, you son of a bitch. Okay. I didn't do it on purpose. I'm like this. <laughs> I know. And I never get mad when people are late. Or yeah. I, I never get mad when people flake because I am that person too. The, 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 the term time blocking is. I hate that term. I, I, I am not organized enough to time block. <laughs> well, so, okay. So bang, I'm the, I'm the worst. I started this with, I'm the worst at time management. And this is, this is how a typical day is for me. I wake up with grand ambition. I'm like, <laughs> I've got my to-do list over here that I've had oh, filled you made out a list. for, you well, made a list. in my defense, it was made yesterday. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I didn't get to check anything off yesterday because something happened. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> so I've got my to-do list, you know, already pre-filled out and I'm like, okay, I am going to do these things and I'm going to get it done. So I get up and then, you know, a dog has shit all over the floor. Yeah. Okay. Well, that set me back. I couldn't time block for that, you know? No, you can't. <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, you know, all right, well, it's, it's, okay, this is how the day's going to be. It's cool. I'm steadfast in my ways. I'm going to get this to-do Y'all list got done. Your list. Yeah. And then, you know, uh, I, I get in the truck and I'm on my way to the office and I notice that I have um, a flat in uh, the rear tire of my truck. This has happened just the other day. So um, I go, uh, I, I was real low on air, right? So I'm like, okay, all right, this wasn't on the list, but it's got to be taken care of. Yeah. You know, so I'm at the tire shop and I'm, uh, it's really cold this day. And I'm like, I don't have a jacket. And, you know, cause I was just going to the office, right? It's, yeah. It's warm in the office. Uh, um, <clears throat> back to my list. Okay. Top of the list. I'm going to get this done. Some emergency has already happened again. Work you know, is happening, yeah. There's a problem with another project, and then there's somebody who screwed something up and they need to fix right now. It's just like, I hate to react to shit. Yeah. But it's like, I can't time block a way around it. You can't. I, I'm I, I've not to been block. able to be successful at it. If um, 
anybody who was on the fence about being a realtor, what advice would you give them? Have a few months set back for money so you can survive if you're by yourself. That's huge. And don't expect it all to come to you. And you get in it what you put in it. So the more hours you put, the more money. you got to wait for the pipeline to fill up for it to start overflowing. So you have to give yourself that grace time of the pipeline to fill up. It's not going to happen right away. <clears throat> when, and it costs money up front. you got to buy signs. you got to do stuff. So what would you say for the hostile client? What would you say? And I know this is going to be, this is going to be different for everyone, but I mean, what, yeah. what would you, what do you think? What do you think is the, the most calming st- strategy or tactic that you could use? with? I just a, listen out- to them and I'm on their side. If you are not on their side and you start trying to prove your point in any way, that is taken as not on their side. My job is to be on their side and I have to absorb a lot of it and it's okay. That's my job. I absorb it for them. Yeah. Pick your battles. Right? And I've also learned, which I didn't before I'd, I have, bleh, I just tell them everything. And instead of telling them everything, I keep them, they know everything, but they're out of the drama loop of the transaction. Right. I take care of, you know, the crazy shit stirring that's going on in that transaction. And I have them on the bank, yeah. on the river bank while everything's doing this. <laughs> and if I have to bring them in, I bring them in and then I set them back over there sure. because I need them calm and I need them happy at the end of the transaction because you don't want them to walk away. How many people have bought a house and said, oh, it was the worst experience I've ever had? It's because of the shit storm happening in the middle. <clears throat> they sh- and, but that took me time to learn. Yeah, there's, um, you know, there's a lot of moving parts. Oh, no, uh, to yes. Traditionally, to, uh, yes. To a traditional house sale. You, you have, know? yeah, and you have the realtor, the lender, the title company, the inspectors. You have all these different Financing. people with finding, yeah, all these different information that they're all t- darting at this one human so you just have to stand there <laughs> and be like, give it to me. You just absorb it. And then you give them in a calm, rational manner, a package of what's been sent to them. Mm-hmm. So I think something that you guys get a bad rap for is like what you just said, that the, there's so many different things. That, that Yeah. If the title or lender, it's on us. Right. It's on us. You know, it's yeah. like, it would be, it would be great if you could set that expectation, but until you're doing it, you know, you're it's not an really emotional, know it. it's emotional. You can't even pre prepare them for this. So underwriting. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I do pre prepare <laughs> them for underwriting. You know what I tell all my clients in this, since I started telling them this, because you know, they'd call back and be so pissed off. Why do I have to, or do they not keep up with themselves? What's going on? They've called me for 10 different things. I tell them, get all your shit together, put it in a file and they're going to call you 30 times for the same file. Take a breath, send it to them, and forget about it. And since I did that, they all do that. And if they do that, they're not stressed. Nice. Because otherwise, they're going to be nagged daily. So they get that little email, send it off, because you have it, you've sent it 30 other times. What's one more? I just explain they're different departments. It's going to happen. You're going to get pissed off, but don't get pissed off. It's okay. Just send it. Have it right there. This is everything that you'll need if you just get yes. these things. Yes. And have them on standby. In a file, on your phone. <laughs> Put it on your phone on an, in your documents. And just the lady today that closed, she said that was the best advice I got. Because she said, I just kept sending it, kept sending it. And she said it was no skin off my nose. Right. Well, and in two, right? She was expecting them to call back and, and ask for them to send it, you know? Yeah. So the, um, the, in my opinion, realtors get a bad rap because – there are so many different things that can kill a deal that are just outside of the realtor's control. Oh yeah. You Most know? of it. All we're there, we're there to facilitate contracts. Yeah. Well, that's what we're there for. And well, it, well, like Ken said, he goes, I don't sell houses. The houses sell themselves. Yeah. Like, I, I'm yeah just, I, I don't feel like I'm a salesperson. Yeah. I, you know, if I, I was a salesperson, that'd be gross trying to push people towards houses. Right. I mean, go pick your house. I'll open the door and then I'm going to, I'm going to do your contracts. Right. That's where I shine. Well, and that's, you know, that's basically what he said too. It's just, you know, like, we're here to make sure that, you know, you're not being taken advantage, advantage of, of, yeah, you know, so <clears throat> well, uh, let me back up. So like the team, the, the team of people that you prefer to use. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, like you were saying earlier and ask for every chair. So do they're, yeah, they're my chairs for sure. So, and is that, is that like a, a personality thing? It is, or is so a hundred percent. So y'all get along, y'all know. They work like I do. Mm -hmm. I know that I can call the lenders at the, at two in the morning Mm -hmm. and be like, listen, 
this is worrying her. Give me an answer right now. And my lender is going to pick up the phone when I call. Nice. It's a joke. I call, you pick up and it's, and it's not mean, <laughs> but my title, same thing. Mm-hmm. She's, you know, she's the same way my preferred title person. She lives here in Cibolo. Mm-hmm. I can call her at home at night and be like, oh my gosh, what's going on? And she will stop what she's doing. I have to build people around me that are like me because if they're not and they work at a slower pace or nine to five, yep. oh my gosh, I would be horrible to them Yeah, because well, I expect what I give out from everybody around me. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, and I understand if they don't, that's fine. They're just not for me. Ask for every chair. Yeah. I love that. I'm going to have to get that on the <laughs> canvas Ask or something. for every yeah. chair. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, uh, the, the nine to five stigma for um, employees that are working at these third party companies, right? So title. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, no. No, no, sir. <laughs> <laughs> My people don't work nine to five. Now they might. Now I know that the lender, one specific lender doesn't leave. You know, she'll stay there at the office, but she's always working. But the title will leave. But I still have, as long as I have access to them. Sure. And that goes for my photographers. I can text them at any time or my inspectors. If I have a question, they're available anytime. I mean, it, that's who I surround myself with. I don't spend money. I just go out and I make relationships. And that takes a certain kind of personality. And a certain amount of time. Yeah. So, yeah, for sure. Like Kim was saying, you know, like she, like, well, actually there's been several people that I've, that we've, that we've talked to that they, they all say, they all come down to the same thing about their that's the, the relationships yes you know and yes. it's like in this community in particular if they don't know if if they don't trust you they're not going to buy from you no absolutely not you know if i rub them the wrong way they're not going to buy from me right and I'm, I'm sure i rub people the wrong way so like with acme it was like people didn't you know like i tried to put these systems in place to buffer myself oh no no, but people I, want to I, deal me with in you. particular, you know I would I mean? have never like dealt with someone else besides you. Well, because that's how I am. Well, yeah, you know, and it's like, I want to give that, that, per, that service, you know what I mean? But it's like, you know, and. and oh, but, and that's funny, by the way, did you point out that you did the logo? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so, but my thing though is, is like, it's, you know, you, you want to give people that service, you know what I mean? But there's only so much of you. Right, right. Yeah. So, and that's that's was my crux. I came to the point where I felt like every time I met someone, they were taking a piece of me. And I had to learn that it doesn't have to be so many people. Mm-hmm. It was just I could take on a few clients and still give that to them. Sure. Because that's what they're hiring me. For. They're hiring me. Mm-hmm. I'm my brand. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate you coming in. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> it was a good seeing you. You too.